Hello there. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of movies that I own on Blu-ray or 4K, but I'm yet to have watched them. This is Gravity 2013. We are going to be watching it for the first time. My name is Ellie Moses, your 23-year-old law and film student. He from Sydney, Australia. Shitty shop, baby. And yes, my only vivid memory of this movie is seeing the trailer for it when my family um, and I went to go watch Fast and Furious 6 in the theaters in 2013. And I remember being freaked out by this trailer. I was scared to watch this film that when my brother and my dad purchased it on Blu-ray a few years ago, I didn't watch it at night with them. I don't know. There's something about space and that element of the unknown that just freaks me out but now it overwhelms me with curiosity so every time there's something to do with deep oceans or deep space it overwhelms me with curiosity and i just want to click on it and find out even though it scares the crap out of me yeah that's that's a that's my little rant right there we're here to watch gravity for the first time and yes the imdb top 100 i am making my way through that as well with movies i haven't seen before obviously the ones that i've seen before i'm not going to watch them but i am making my way through that they will return so recommend me an imdb top 100 film that um i if i haven't seen it i will give it a watch as well so yeah i cannot wait to watch gravity for the first time let's get into the reaction let's have some fun and if you enjoy it feel free to like share subscribe only if you enjoy it and yeah I cannot wait. Let's see what this movie has in store for us. Let's go. Yes, ha, ha, ha. You can make fun of what I'm wearing. I should be dressed in a bottle. I might as well be dressed in a bottle, okay? Forget about it. Oh, I didn't know there was a third character in this. a little more specific. Indeterminate estimates make Houston anxious. Anxiety is not good for the heart. System is ready to reactivate. Like in space with them. I thought it was just George Clooney and Sandra Bullock. Fully functional. He appears to be doing some form of the Macarena. Well, that would be just a best guess scenario on my part. Not a problem. Thank you, Kowalski. In advance, I'd like to say RIP no, to Sharif. That's negative. Could Houston be misinterpreting the data? I just know. <laughs> We're not receiving any data. Oh, I got that feeling. <laughs> I got a bad feeling about this. Recommending a biz check for component damage. <laughs> you know what I've loved in this first opening six minutes? Um. I can, I, I've got to remember, but I feel like the camera hasn't had a cutaway yet in terms of the editing stage. And the camera movement has been fantastic. It's like slow and methodical. And immediately because of the camera movement um, and the very few cuts, if any, there hasn't, if, if any, um, I don't think there hasn't been one yet. I feel like I'm already there in space with them. Like there was a situation where the camera panned away to deep space um, to move on to George Clooney's character. And immediately I felt my heart drop like I was there with them. And it's just like, it's an unsettling and um, unnerving situation to be in. Like, it's just, yeah, Sorry. you're not, in, I feel like I'm not in control. I'm used to a basement lab in a hospital where things fall to the floor. Stand by for locking. Mm. Listen, they don't bankroll prototypes, even for your pretty blue eyes. Well, my eyes are brown. We're still okay, going in one take. <laughs> Bro, Sharon is just living the life. The vibes are immaculate for him. He went to Harvard. <laughs> Can't beat the view. So, what do you like about being up here? You're the expert, Doctor. It's your call. Houston, I have a bad feeling about this mission. Please elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same feeling I had about Mardi Gras 1987. That is affirmative. Surprisingly, Control hasn't heard the Mardi Gras story. <laughs> then I realized that this guy is not a guy. That my girl is holding hands with ISS, this. this is Houston. Explorer, this is Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Mission abort. Repeat. I'm paying Mission attention abort. to Sheriff initiate in the background. Or Sharif. Begin re-entry procedure. ISS, initiate emergency evacuation. Copy all Houston and in work. 
Matt, immediate return to explore. Repeat, immediate return to explore. Debris from the missile strike has caused a chain reaction, hitting other satellites and creating new debris. Traveling faster than a high speed, pull it up to endure altitude. Up. Oh! Unstrapped. Look, we need to get the hell out of here. Need some help there, man? No, don't wait for us. He's stuck! No, oh, Sharif! Man down! Man down. This is phenomenal. That like was like the first cutaway I could notice in like the first 12 minutes. I mean, I know there was a couple um, clever uses of cuts probably. And I think one of them was when George Clooney's character, um, the camera was racking focus on him and it panned away to look at Earth. And I think Dr. Stone was talking about the how beautiful the silence was from up here. And throughout that scene right there, um, the debris the attack, I did not want to commentate because I was locked in. The film does a fantastic job at locking you in and engaging you um, in that scene right there as if you're there present. And that's a testament to how fantastic uh, the camera work is. I feel like the camera work has been immaculate and smooth, like smooth as hell. Um, there's no shaky cam. Um, the way it's rigged up or the way I feel like um, it's moving, it's just done in a smooth fashion and it's fantastic and it's all made to look as if it was done in one take in that scene and even though there was a few instances where i feel like they were used for like cuts or breaks um in in uh in like action with the characters or dialogue with the characters um the other one probably being when it panned away uh to look in the um deep dark space as the debris was attacking it's all done expertly it's really done well and obviously because there's no sound in space um the music elevates and then all you could hear is the comms radio and it's amazing amazing great great stuff Man, that transition to the POV inside her helmet was seamless. Not only in the camera work, but also the audio. That's a fantastic shot right there. Drifting into the unknown of space. Like, I feel like... That's scarier than any horror movie to me, like, or for me. I don't know what you guys think, but there's... Yeah, Lieutenant Kowalski, yes. Yes, Lieutenant Kowalski, I'm here, I'm here. Yes, yes, I copy, I'm here. I'm here. My life, my life. I know you never realized how devastatingly good looking I am. But I need you to stop staring and help me with the tether. Okay. Okay. Like anything you say is gonna be hard to diffuse the tension right. in this scene. <laughs> Alright. Now to clear you from the jets, I'm gonna give you a little push. No 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 damn it no damn it damn it You're burning oxygen Houston and the blind this is Kowalski Dr. Stone and I are gonna make our way back to base I love how the lighting has changed as well and not from a production standpoint um, with like obviously using lighting from like the soundstage and things like that but the lighting reflecting of earth like in the planet where before um, you're obviously admiring the beauty of a planet looking at the greens and the light blues of the ocean and then now as soon as this situation has happened the reflection from the earth has 
sort of turned into like another planet like thing if that makes sense like obviously they're on a different side i think but the way um it's reflecting at the moment obviously you have all these dark grays um and it's it's stormy and things like that i guess to represent the situation they're in as well but um yeah I like the change um of lighting through the use reflecting uh through using it from earth we can't hear us we don't know that that's why we keep talking if somebody is listening they might just save your life factor in our current orbit and i figure we got about 90 minutes before we get our asses kicked she got six percent oxygen six percent we never really get a good look at sharif and what he looks like we haven't yet at all oh okay i take that back Can we get some F's in the chat for Sharif? My guy is the MVP of this film. <laughs> Holy fuck, yo! Man. You... Oh, oh, and the retainer. I got mine right here. You know what? Shout out to the retainers out there. I'm wearing mine while watching this one. Except mine's in my mouth. <laughs> mission specialist Dr. Stone and mission commander Matthew Kowalski are the sole survivors of the SDS-157. You know what that um, popping out head reminded me of? Um, I'm not sure if the filmmakers like thought of this, but that kind of reminded me of an homage to Jaws. You know, when they're searching the boat in the first film um, and I think Hooper goes underwater to search the wreckage of the boat and the head pops up from where the shark bite was. That scene when I was a kid got me, like gave me a heart attack. And that again, got me right there. It kind of reminded me of that. I apologize for not complying. I should have stopped working as soon as he instructed me to. We were gonna get hit no matter what. There's nothing you can do to change that. Great. All right, after you. The visual effects in this film are fantastic. <laughs> I hope this is not Why one of I was driving when I got the call, so ever since then that's what I do. I wake up, I go to work, and I just drive. I love how Kowalski's reflected off her helmet and then she was reflected off Kowalski's um, mirror in his wrist. Even though it's a situation of survival, right? There's something beautiful about just sitting here and watching this. Like, I could just kick back and enjoy the peace and serenity of this film. I'm just admiring the beauty of space. I hope this is not one of those survival movies where... It's like all halluc a hallucination. Like if that, if you get what I mean, like one of the characters hasn't been there the whole time and they're just imagining it when they're actually just drifting and floating in space for the whole film. I can breathe again for a little bit. Ryan, listen. You, you have to let me go. No. The ropes are too loose. I'm pulling no. you with me. No. You have to let me go, or we both no, die. No, you go, we're fine. Ah, ah, no. Ah. Ryan, let go. No. You're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. It's not up to you. No, 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 no. Please. No. Please don't move. Please don't do this. You're going to make it, Ryan. This early on? Damaged for re entry, but it's 
perfectly fine for a little Sunday drive. <laughs> to the west. You see that dot in the distance? The Chinese station. Yes. You're gonna take the Soyuz and you're gonna cruise over there. Every time. I crash it every time. You point the damn thing at Earth. It's not rocket science. <laughs> This time tomorrow, you're going to be back in Lake Zurich with a hell of a story to tell. <laughs> you copy? <laughs> what? Wait, didn't he say that to her and then she said, I have brown You're eyes? You have beautiful eyes. Yeah. Son on the Ganges. It's amazing. You know what this movie does a great job of? It, it it's a it does this fantastically, right? It does a great job of sort of zoning you out in terms of like making you um, feel like you're there in the moment, admiring the beauty of the earth, admiring um, the beauty of space, um, you know, through the calm, serene music at points and the cinematography as well, the way the camera slowly moves around. Um, and uh, I guess as well through the character's dialogue, um, the, you know, little bit of small talk and um, sort of distracts you from the situation that they're in, like a survival situation. And I guess... Kowalski is sort of, you know, trying to make Ryan calm in that situation through the use of small talk, you know, Lake Zurich, um, the music and things like that. But then at points, um, the film does also a fantastic job at zoning you back in and locking you back into your seat to make you feel as if you're in this situation um, of do or die. Like it's fight or flight, basically. <laughs> um, and yeah, it does a fantastic job at locking you back in and zoning you out for a while. Okay, you're admiring the beauty, but then it does a fantastic job at reminding you again that this is a do or die situation. It's a survival, um, um, it's a survival um, situation here, and it, it's great. It's great. I feel like that's also reflected in the breathing as well. I feel like you as the audience at points um you get a moment to breathe you get a moment um to you know relax and that's when you're admiring the beauty of it but then when it zones you back into that situation of survival survival mode you're struggling to breathe with the characters as well like picks up the intensity is it me or did she look like she was crawling up into like a fetal position there. I don't know if that's meant to signify something. I need to look at the behind the scenes of this movie because the way this is filmed is absolutely fantastic. Shout out to the cameraman on this film, man, for getting all this amazing footage and surviving this situation. Couldn't have done it without him. He might be the only one to survive this film. Oh, the rope's gonna get caught. There's never a moment where you feel safe in this film, at all. Even in moments where you feel like the ship has been steadied, you just know there's another storm on the horizon. 
I don't know if that's a good analogy, but I feel like, in my opinion, it's a great way to describe this film. Clear skies with a chance of satellite debris. <laughs> Ryan been learning from Matt. Sarcastic humor. <laughs> The attention to detail in the background as well. Um, you can see a bit of debris flying in the distance. And the music is picking up as well. It's intensifying. Shit. See? Clever setup if you're paying attention to the background uh, of the shots there. I love how the score has to do the heavy lifting because um, of there being no sound in space. It has to do the heavy lifting, but I almost wish at that point right there, they would have eliminated the score and just had it completely silent and just heard rapid breathing. Well, that's one way to um, detach that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let the debris do the work. Three, two, one. Yo, Houston need to get their comms back up, man. You know when you just need that one thing to go right for you? Yeah, it ain't happened in this film. There hasn't been one thing that's you went right. Me. You gotta be kidding me! Oh, and you can see the northern lights in the right hand side of the screen man it's like at points you're just in awe and wonder at how beautiful this film looks and then you're right back to survival mode that's that russian orthodox baby <laughs> let's go <laughs> is this the chinese station is this tiangong copy I know, we're all gonna die. Everybody knows that. But I'm gonna die today. Nah, nah, come on, man. We need to overcome this adversity. I don't need that. You know, to know. Nobody will mourn for me. No one will pray for my soul. Oh, the tea is floating as well. Will you mourn for me? Will you say a prayer for me? I mean, I'd say one for myself, but I've never prayed in my life, so... Hey, it's never too late to pray. Nobody ever taught me how. Never too late. I love how right there the camera racked focus on the single T and you can see her reflection in it as well. What did she connect to? Did she is that the Chinese space? Um Or did she connect to some sort of Chinese radio? Or is this guy doing like the night shift? Is she gonna shut off the oxygen? Ah, oh, come on, man! Come on, man! We cannot you. We cannot lose the will to live. We gotta get this W. The storm never lasts forever. You just need to weather the storm. The tides will change eventually. That's nice, honey. Obviously, with a lack of oxygen, she might hallucinate and maybe Matt will pop up to her and give her some sort of pep talk. There we go. Yeah, there's got to be a hallucination. Even the lighting change, it looks like the sun is rising over the horizon, <laughs> like... <laughs> Even though it's the lights in the uh, cockpit or compartment, it makes it look as if as, um, she's waking up in like a dream. Check your watch, 13 hours and 11 minutes. 
Call Anatoly and tell him he's been bumped. <laughs> how did you? Trust me, it's a hell of a story. But how did you? You never told me where. Oh, well. That was so. It's almost like too good to be Mr. true. <laughs> Mr. Trophy, you can just shut down all the systems, turn on all the lights, just close your eyes and tune out everybody. You know, um, nobody up here that can hurt you. The song that was being used early in the film, I think it's called "Angels Are Hard to Find." And in this situation, I feel like Matthew is sort of like appearing as an angel to Ryan, if that makes sense. Um, uh, he's that angel that's going to save her in adversity. And he's even uh, still got, you know, obviously he was in the in the gravity suit. Um, but the color contrast with her suit and his suit um, stands out in terms of like it's him appearing as that angel in the moment, um, that shining light um like like an epiphany um divine intervention and i'm not sure if i'm right in this situation um but yeah i feel like that was foreshadowed earlier on with angels are hard to find um and he's that angel in this situation that's hopefully gonna rescue her or um give her that um kick on to survive Safe. you gotta plant both your feet on the ground and start living life how did you get here i'm telling you it's a hell of a story <laughs> hey, Ryan. What? It's time to go home. He's not gonna be there when she wakes up. Yeah. I like I like the simple message this film is conveying of you know like uh by fighting on through adversity and overcoming it. Um and if she can make it through her child dying, she can make it in this situation. Um gotta continue to be strong. And it's using, I guess, the space situation and that survival um, method to explain that. Because this is probably one of the worst situations you could be in. And if you can make it through that, make it through anything. Tell her that she is my angel. She makes me so proud. So, so proud. Andrew Bullock has killed it in this film. Killed it. And you tell her that I'm not quitting. You tell her that I love her so much. Can you do that for me? All right, Matt got your daughter in heaven. Matt got your daughter in heaven. I'm tearing up. Why? Oh. Please, man. The momentum has swung a little bit now in her favor. No, don't. don't. Please, hopefully the storm is over. Don't make something happen now. Like, I don't want some predator Yautra ship to come intercept her here. Oh, she's using them Vin Diesel inspiration right there. One last ride. Wait. Talk about full sending it. <laughs> I love how in the beginning of the film she was hesitant to sort of like move around in space and then now she's just taking that challenge full on. She wasn't afraid to take that leap. So she's cooking at the moment. Let her cook. However, she has to get in the ship before she gets cooked herself. Yo, the score is majestic. I can hear sort of like um, choir and opera in the background a little bit. It's faint, but it's beautiful. How much impact? I don't know if you guys that are scientifically versed in space stuff. How much impact can you, these things really take from like debris and things like that? I feel like there should be an option to switch to English, like a universal <laughs> space code for these situations. <laughs> 
Reporting from the Shensu, I'm about to undock from Tiangong. Ah. And I have a bad feeling about this mission. <laughs> ah. I like. Have a story. <laughs> I like how she glanced to her left there to see if Matt was there. Never, never mind the story. Either way, whichever way. No harm, no foul. <laughs> Hey, this is motivational in my opinion, man. I'm ready. Like, I love how she's embracing it now. She's like, fuck it! We going down in glory! <laughs> I love how the Russian, um... Uh, the Russian sort of station as well had it's like they had their or the little um, the pod had its own religious icon and the Chinese had their own religious icon as well <laughs> she praying to all the gods <laughs> come on man I need feet on the ground to feel safe Air, fire, water, earth, all the elements used. <laughs> it's not feet on the ground, it's feet on the water. Doesn't count yet. Oh, she's gonna get caught up in everything. Come on, man. Like, the worst of the worst has happened in this film. Like, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. And I guess it's meant to be like that because it's... I think because it's about overcoming adversity through the toughest of times. It's meant to portray that. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the Megalodon comes now or some shit like that. Like, that's how this film has been going. We're still not safe yet. I saw what happened in Jaws. We're still not safe yet. <laughs> Wait, who directed this film? I want to know who directed this. Because this is fantastic. This has been amazing. I just want to know who... Who directed this. Oh, Alfonso Cuaron. He did... um Yeah, Prisoner of Azkaban. And Roma, yeah, 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 okay, this, yeah, he's a fantastic director. He he did Prisoner of Azkaban, and that's my favorite Harry Potter film. Like, yeah. He, he's a fantastic filmmaker. Feet on the ground. We good. We weathered the storm and made it to shore. <laughs> Learning to walk again. <laughs> I noticed how during the film as well, she, like, I remember she crawled up into the fetal position and I'm not sure if that's like meant to mean that she's going to have new life, like a new purpose and things like that. Um, like she's going to be reinvigorated in a sense. A hey, beautiful, beautiful gravity is beautiful. What a film, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm gonna keep my commentary short and sweet towards the end because I feel like whatever I needed to say, I said during the film. But um, I love how the film uh uses obviously the situation of surviving in space um and puts like one of the most difficult, I guess circumstances for a human to be in or like um a situation that's almost like near impossible to survive but it uses that situation um to create a message of like you know overcoming adversity and um it basically says that in life you know there's going to be situations where you don't feel like you're in control sometimes you're never in control um and there's a storm that comes and you need to weather that storm that storm is going to throw everything at you you're going to um 
you're gonna feel like you're drowning at points you're gonna feel like there's waves hitting you from every direction hence the debris in this film um and you're just gonna think it's over um there's gonna be points yeah where you think it's over like there's no coming back from this but as this prove as this film proves um even in the situations that are you know humanly i guess in the worst possible situations humanly possible situations um there's always a way out there's always a way of overcoming that adversity and you know in this film we get that ryan um had her daughter pass uh pass away through it like it wasn't like it wasn't even like a car accident or things like that she was just playing tag and fell and hit her head um and she overcame that um and she was in space and um at points admiring the beauty of that and then yeah she even like you see her fee um sort of eradicate over the film like it slowly um dissipates her fee like in the beginning of the film you saw how hesitant she was um and this is like a short film it's only like 90 minutes um but it's 90 minutes of gripping tension and claustrophobia but at points um especially towards the end it becomes increasingly motivational um and it's uplifting even in a dire situation of um you know being alone out there in space um there's always hope there's always hope and yeah even just when you think it's over um i guess that's the point where you just got to pick yourself up and believe a little bit and give it a go. Even if you don't survive, you just give it a go. You just go ride or die, baby. And that's what she did at the end. She embraced it. She took on that challenge and she went out trying. Um, and she didn't go out trying, but she went out, like she um, basically was like, I'm going to go out trying. And yeah, it was, it was a fantastic film, fantastic film. And I absolutely loved it. And it's a film I'll be watching again. And I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction to Gravity. As always, been your boy Lee Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace. What a film. What a film.